on today's episode of the Carolina Sports Guy, we're going to kind of take a little historical look at the college basketball, um, the good years for Davidson College. Look in the late 60s, kind of look at the uh, early 2000s. But before we get into today's content, make sure you subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Hit the bell notification to be notified of more content like what's in today's video. Give me a thumbs up, pound that like button, and leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about today's video or what you'd like to see in future videos. All right, guys, I decided as looking at I've, I've done a video from History of Wake Forest and kind of looked at the Tar Heels a little bit and basketball and Duke and UNC Charlotte and kind of covered the Clemson-South Carolina rivalry. I kind of looked back and I said, you know, hey, let me give a shout out to Davidson College. And not many people, unless you're older, especially older than me, because I wasn't quite aware. I knew Davidson had a pretty good basketball history, uh, but I did not realize it was as good as it was. Now, Southern Conference, I want to really study the two, you know, because Davidson basketball dates way back, you know, over 100 years ago. Um, but Southern Conference, they have won 23 regular season championships. Not just trying to read them all off, but 64, 65, 66, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. Now you're talking about like seven, eight, nine championships in a span of, you know, 10 years. They went again in 81, and it, the lean years were in the late 70s and throughout the 80s. Then 96, 97, 98, they kind of swing back in. Uh, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2007, 08, 09, 2012, 2013, 2014. And that would be their last season in the Southern Conference. Um, but key thing to remember with these 23 regular season championships in the Southern Conference, and just kind of let you know, they were a member of the Southern Conference from 1936 to 2014. So, yeah, they were in there when the Tar Heels were there in Virginia and Clemson and South Carolina and Wake and Duke. Uh, you know, a lot of schools, like 20-some schools, VMI, uh, just many, many schools, Maryland. Uh, they were in that conference. So they're not going to taste success until many of these schools leave in 53 and go to the ACC or other ones kind of join the uh, SEC as they create that conference. Um, but from 1936 to 2014, they won a total of 23 regular season championships. Like I said, primarily in the 60s and early 70s is when they really showed off and got half of them. Now, think about the Southern Conference though at this time. If you didn't win the Southern Conference tournament, you didn't go to the big dance, the NCAA tournament. Unlike a day where you got 68 schools that go and play in games, stuff like that, even from the premier conferences, if you did not win your conference tournament, you could have been 16-0 and 0 in your conference, number one in the country. Maybe you would have been 28-1 and overall. You get in your conference tournament and you get to the championship game and lose. If you didn't win your conference tournament, you didn't get invited to the big dance. So, of those 23 championships, only 12 of them did they win the tournament championship. Because, you know, like I do, it's sometimes it's hard to win three games in a row, even if you're the best team in that conference. So, in 68, 69, 66, 68, 69, and 70, they won. Those were like the Lefty Drizel years, especially in the, the 60s there. 86, they win. 98 they win, 2002, 2006, 2007, 2008, and those, that was the Curry year, uh, Steph Curry, in 2012, 2013. So like I said, if you did not win your conference tournament, you didn't go to the big dance. Okay, so they're a 12-time tournament champion representative of the Southeast, Southeast, um, Southeast Conference, Southern Conference. Uh, so that's 12 times they went to the NCAA tournament. Now, the other couple of times they went, they left the Southern Conference in 2014 and joined the Atlantic 10. Um, so from 
2014 to the present, they've been a member of the Atlantic 10. Now, in 2015, they won the Atlantic 10's regular season. And this is when we got more schools playing. We've definitely got 64 schools playing in the tournament by then. Uh, but they get an at-large bid because the Atlantic 10 is more of a premier conference than the Southern Conference is. Uh, two schools were taken out of the Atlantic 10. I believe they've even had three schools at one time. So the, the advantage of joining the Atlantic 10 over the Southern Conference was if they were upset in the tournament, but they had a really great regular season or the second best team, they could get a at-large bid and they did. And then in 2018, they won their only Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament Championship. So they qualified as the Atlantic 10 champ. Now, looking at Davidson's history, 1967-68 is the one year I want to concentrate on here. Davidson finished eighth in the AP poll. Eighth. Uh, they go out, finish the season at 24 and five. They beat St. John's, a Big East school, 79 to 70. Then they beat uh, Ivy League school, Columbia, 61 to 59 in overtime. Now you think, but at the time, Ivy League schools, Princeton and Penn and Columbia, they pretty good basketball schools that upset some pretty premier talent. They beat the likes of Duke and North Carolina. Penn had done this. So not nothing, anything to sneeze at. But then they get to play UNC in the Elite Eight in 1968, and they lose by four, 70 to 66. The head coach of this great team for Davidson at the time was Lester Giselle. And he had kind of wanted to play, being a Davidson that is just north of Charlotte, and wanted to always play North Carolina to show that they had the same amount of talent. They were just as good. I remember, Dean Smith had not won a title up to that time in the 60s. Um, Carolina said, no, we're not going to. It's already tough enough playing in the, in the Dixie Classic and playing in the Big Four tournaments. We're not going to play anybody but any conference, North Carolina schools, before the season starts. And Lester Giselle really kind of thought he was being dodged. That Dean Smith and the Tar Heels didn't want to play him. And like I said, they gave Tar Heels a run for the money, only losing by four. But UNC would make the Final Four that year. I believe that they end up losing the eventual champion UCLA in the Final Four. So there you go. I mean, Davidson can play with anybody. Then, you think that's something else. 68-69, Sports Illustrated had preseason ranking in Davidson number one. And you thought 24-5 and five was good in 67-68? Well, 68-69, and 27-3. They finished the AP poll number five in the country that year. That says a lot, folks. But they end up doing the same thing they did the year before. They play a Big East school in Villanova and beat them 75-61 in the first round. Sweet 16, they play St. John's, who they played the year before, beat them 79-69. But then they got a matchup in the Elite Eight. Who else? University of North Carolina. They lose by two. Hotly contested game. And, you know, Two years in a row, Davidson's been right there. Carolina makes it back to the Final Four, slotted against UCLA and those teams again. And uh, UCLA wins another championship. But, and there's my point, well, Lou Alcindor and UCLA had a great team. But Davidson was just as good, if not equal to, the University of North Carolina at this point in time. Uh, kind of looking at it, they were coached by Lefter Dizelle, probably the greatest coach that they had. 176 and 65 was his record at Davidson College. Had a 73% win percentage. Very impressive. Uh, he would later go on to coach Maryland. And, you know, a little tidbit here, he was born in Norfolk, Virginia, which is only an hour up the road from me right now. Um, but he would win some ACC championships and give Dean Smith and the Orioles a run for the money. And his very first ever recruit, a little sidebar here, was Terry Holland who would play for him in the 60s. And Terry Holland would go on and later coach Ralph Sampson and the number one University of Virginia uh, in the early 80s. And then he'd be the athletic director at East Carolina uh, in the uh, 2000s. Now, he did have three All-Americans. Fred Herschel, he was a second-team consensus All-America in 1964. 
and he was first team consensus all American in 1965. He had Dick Snyder. He was a 66 second team consensus all American, and he ended up being a first round selection of the St. Louis Hawks before they moved to Atlanta. And Mike Malloy, in 1969, he was the second team consensus all American, and in 1970, third team consensus all American. Okay, now. Didn't even mean to leave out, but 1966, they beat Rhode Island in the first round um, of the NCAA tournament, and then they lost to Syracuse in the next round, 94-78. But even the 66 team that had Dick Snyder, pretty pretty good teams. Um, but you got to look at the talent, overall talent these schools had, and pretty impressive. Um, then you're going to get to this dry spell. Brazil leaves the school, like I said. Now, the winningest coach we got to talk about in Davidson, who's had more of a longevity, is Bob McKillop. Uh, he came on, and he starts really getting Davidson known. Did well there for a while, but 2008 is the year he's known for. Uh, his prize recruit, Steph Curry. Dad, Dale Curry, played for the Hornets, played Virginia Tech in college. Um, do not see how... The University of North Carolina or Duke or NC State or Wake Forest or anybody in the ACC let Steph Curry get away. Uh, growing up in Charlotte, being a big Hornet fan, his dad playing for the Hornets. But he goes to Davidson. Even UNC Charlotte not picking up this kid. He was in a better conference at the time. He goes to Davidson, though. They beat Gonzaga in the first round, 82-76. These are pretty good Gonzaga schools where John Stockton had gone to. Now, he's already in the NBA at this time. But the Gonzaga, who's a sleeping giant and just lost the NCAA championship this year, you know, they were building something then. Uh, second round, Davidson beats Georgetown 74-70 in 2008. They get to the Sweet 16, and they beat Wisconsin 73-56. This is all behind Steph Curry, who's probably the best pure shooter I've ever seen play in college or pro ball. But what do they do? They get to the Elite Eight once again. And they play Kansas, who's going to be the eventual champion in 2008, Bill Self's Kansas team. And they lose 59-57. If Steph Curry could have had the ball in his hands on the last shot and could have drained the three, which if he would have been the one taking the last shot or he would have somehow gotten a shot off, I like my chances with him. If they'd have won, who would they have fought, fared and faced in the Final Four? It would have been none other than North Carolina. Would that not have been something to see? Because Kansas beat North Carolina and beat them by more than these two points that Kansas beat Davidson by. So if Davidson could have beaten Kansas some kind of way, kept Kansas, Kansas from getting a Final Four winning championship, would Davidson have stunned North Carolina as well? Or would it have been the same thing three times running where North Carolina beats Davidson in a NCAA game with the right to Final Four? This time it would have been in the Final Four. But Steph Curry, 2008 second team consensus All-American. They come by next year. They did not win their tournament. But 2009, he was named first team consensus All-American. Of course, we know the rest with him being the number one pick of the Golden State Warriors. And the thing I'll finally finish out, it's not just the NCAA folks. Those years that uh, Davidson didn't qualify for the NCAA because they lost the conference tournament, they have played in 12 NIT games and they have an overall record of 3-9. and nine. So they do have a history of playing the NCAA tournament and the NIT tournament, dominating the Southern Conference in the 60s and early 70s, and finally getting in the Atlantic 10, where they've had a little bit of success as well. So what do you guys think of today's video? Let me know in comments below. Please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost anything. Hit the bell notification so you can be notified for more content like this. Smash that like button. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Carolina Sports Guy.